Thousands of people have been forced to flee their homes as historic flooding hits the Midwest. Heavy rains and melting snow triggered the floods. At least three people have died, two in Nebraska and one in Iowa. Hundreds of homes and businesses have been damaged or destroyed. Flood warning watches and warnings have been posted in a dozen states, with authorities warning more rain is on the way. CBS News correspondent DeMarco Morgan has the latest from Crescent, Iowa. Strange levees gave way across the Midwest, inundating hundreds of homes with walls of water. Thousands were forced to evacuate. They were telling everybody, just grab what you can and get out. 50-year-old James Wilkie died trying to rescue stranded motorists. 80-year-old Betty Hamernick was killed as floodwaters filled her home. And 55-year-old Aleodo Rojas Galan was found submerged. This area right here behind me would normally be farmland, but as you can see right now, it is filled with fast-moving floodwaters. Water that was so strong at one point, it washed out part of this bridge. 100 flood-related road closures left entire towns cut off. We are trapped. We can't get in or out of Fremont, and so planes are flying in supplies from all over, uh, little Learjets and Cessnas. We took one of those Cessnas. From Council Bluffs to Fremont, Nebraska, the town of just over 26,000 is now an island. On the ground, we found Sydney Gaff flying back to Omaha to get to work and school. I think it's good to like see the community come together, bringing supplies in from Omaha and other towns. It's, everyone's helping out. And DeMarco Morgan joins us now from just outside Omaha in Crescent, Iowa. DeMarco, what are the conditions where you are now? Elaine, it's absolutely devastating for so many people who call this area home, also including uh, parts of Nebraska and Wisconsin as well. Right now, we are standing in the Missouri River, which isn't expected to crest until sometime Thursday in St. Joseph, Missouri. But take a look at this. This is also Interstate 680. We actually crossed over a closed bridge. Just to get into this area, you can see nothing uh, but water as far as the eyes can see. This is pretty much the story for this area. And again, across those three states there, about 100 road closures have pretty much caused areas to just be and caused people to be stuck in those areas. They can't uh, get out. They're stranded. Uh, even if you look behind me, it's not just humans, but just take a look at that live cattle back there. You can see tons of cattle back there uh, pretty much stranded in that area as well. And we've been seeing this all over throughout uh, the community. We saw some cattle just sort of just standing uh, on uh, a levy because they didn't have anywhere else to go. So that just goes to show you that this is most certainly a, a dire situation for not just humans, but also for uh, the animals as well. Now, when we talk about the people who have been stranded, uh, we got a chance to ride a Cessna, a couple of Cessnas in some of the single engine planes uh, out there. And we were basically flying into Fremont uh, from Omaha, just trying to see, sort of see uh, how people were trying to get out of Fremont, which was one of the hardest hit areas, a uh, town of 26,000 people. And they had to use planes just to get people to and from Fremont. That just goes to show you that that pretty that that area, that city, it's pretty much an island now. So uh, it's a lot of desperation out here. People want to get back to their homes. But of course, this is one of the major reasons that they can't get back because of these floodwaters. But American Red Cross has told us that they have opened up uh, 12 shelters there. Uh, they've served more than 8,700 people. Again, you mentioned that there are three people who unfortunately did not make it. Uh, two people in Nebraska one here in Iowa. So uh, uh, again, people are just sort of trying to get back on, uh, on their feet, trying to make sense of what happened. But it's not over yet, Elaine, because they're expecting another inch of rain come tomorrow. Wow, just remarkable to see these images and to hear what you're describing, DeMarco. You mentioned those Red Cross shelters where some residents are. Have you had a chance to visit any of those shelters? And if so, what are the conditions like inside? Uh, we did get a chance to uh, visit the shelters, but we did talk to the American Red Cross uh, on the phone because we were clearly literally in planes all day going back and forth. Uh, but they said uh, the conditions are decent. They're uh, doing really well. People are uh, in this community are sort of, you know, just uh, handing uh, out, you know, supplies. You can see this crew right here. I'm not sure exactly what they're doing, but they have boats. Uh, you see this uh, around the uh, community, too, where people are using these boats uh, to rescue people from their homes. But uh, back to what you were saying, uh, people are giving. It's a giving spirit. Of course, you and I, we both have covered stories like this. We've talked about it in the past where when something like this happens, it's always amazing to see how the community comes together and just starts to give. I mean, they've given everything from toilet paper uh, to food vouchers to, to, to gas money, you name it. 
people are helping. But uh, again, when it comes to those shelters, from what we can hear, uh, they are uh, doing well. Uh, people are showing mm -hmm. up and they're you know, spending the night in the shelters and they're also being fed. I mean, I know they're in the midst of it now, but is there any sense at all when residents might be able to return home? Not just yet, uh, Elaine. We're still uh, in sort of some flood warnings and watches uh, throughout the night and into tomorrow. And uh, some of these rivers may not even crest until sometime uh, Friday. And then you talk about uh, Missouri and Kansas as well. Now uh, all of this water, it has to go somewhere. It's going to be going uh, downstream. And you're also talking about billions of dollars and damage. Hundreds of homes and businesses are damaged or destroyed. So it will take a while before they are able to go back. But the good news is some parts uh, of this area, there's, you're starting to see the water recede. So that is some good news there, if there is any. All right, DeMarco Morgan for us in Crescent, Iowa. DeMarco, thank you so much. Stay safe. You bet. You bet. Let's bring in CBS News weather producer David Parkinson. So, David, what can we expect in the coming days? We've got really a compounding problem uh, in that area in that we're having all of this snow melt. The snow's already melted from where DeMarco is, but there's still plenty of snow to the north. We've got warm temperatures. We've got rain on the way. So this is not ending anytime soon. I want to show you just how wide this uh, flooding situation is. Everywhere that's shaded in red here is a river that's forecasted or currently uh, above flood stage. So you can see that stretches from uh, Minneapolis all the way down uh, to the Gulf of Mexico. So it is a really large part of the midsection of the country along the Mississippi River Basin, the Missouri River Basin, and all the rivers that come into it. Interestingly enough, as we take a look closer in here around to Omaha, what you'll actually notice is that all of these sort of rivers that feed into the Missouri River there, those rivers are starting to go down. Uh, but the problem is, is that uh, there are lots of levee breaches. There are lots of, of uh, areas uh, where they can't get back to their normal pattern. And so it's going to take a while for the water to recede in certain places. And then what's left in those areas is lots of roads that are sort of hollowed out. There's feet upon feet of mud. I was speaking with a state trooper yesterday who said that they had to uh, plow five feet of mud off of one of the highways to get some supplies uh, into Fremont. So you can really see uh, once the flooding goes away, it's not over. And then you're starting to see some artifacts here on the radar that indicate uh, there's more rain on the way. But a closer look here would show you that we've got all of these river flood warnings here uh, that are going to be a, a problem for the next several days. We've got temperatures heading up into the 50s and 60s. There's still two or three feet of snowpack uh, in parts of North Dakota and South Dakota. So all of that has to melt and then make its way down through the Missouri River and the Mississippi River. Uh, this is a pattern that's going to be continuing, not just for this week, but it is possible that we see flooding in parts of the plains for the next two or even three weeks. Wow, difficult days ahead. David Parkinson, David, thank you. Sure thing.